This is exciting. I am on my very last triangle of my right side border, which means I will have two whole sides of the border done with the completion of this block. But of course, this block, like most of the other triangles, is quite complicated. This is a modified block that will be in the book for the paper pieces pack, which the difference is mostly this triangle that they fix the edge on and the, and the rest of it's pretty straightforward in the, like it is in the book. So I have my pieces all set up and laid out here. And I've been looking at the assembly of this and there's of course, there's always 60 ways to do things, especially in quilting. How, but um, this creates a little bit of an issue when it comes to this part right here. This is straightforward, you know, obviously this is, and then you're gonna treat this like a row and treat this like a row. When it comes to this, I'm gonna attach these pieces to this side. But up here, I am going to attach, I'm gonna start with this piece and I'm gonna attach this piece and this piece of course, this piece to this piece. But I'm going to attach this piece to this piece and this piece to that piece. And then I'm going to attach this little bitty dude to this section. So essentially, I'm going to have a unit right here. And the same thing opposite on the mirror image side. Then I'm going to attach these to this. You want to work in whole sections that attach piece to piece here. So this piece attaches to this whole length. And this peach attaches to this whole length and with the addition of this then you can attach this whole unit to here and to here but I'm going to treat this as a unit all the way up to 18 and connect it to 19 then I'm going to do the same thing over here and treat this like a unit connect it to 19 and then I'm going to connect this through here that way I don't have to worry about stopping in the middle and making sure that this is at the right point. As with my other triangles, I have to put an arrow direction so I make sure that my triangles get to be in the right spot. Because some of these are very, very similar. And of course I've numbered every single one of them. And there's 20 pieces on this part. This is my tip. I ran out of space on the top of my, bo my box. I am going to start like I usually do, I start at the bottom. Numbering doesn't matter as long as you know which piece is which. So I will still make these units in here because there's the most pieces are in here and the quicker I can get this corralled, the more I don't have to worry about whether or not these little bits, these little teeny tiny pieces, I need to get onto its spot so that I don't lose it because that's I'm kind of paranoid about that. So this is not a fabric direction. This is a top and bottom direction but you can also use it as a fabric direction because I do have a directional fabric on this particular block and it's you know like if it was this way it would look one way or if it's on the point which is it, it is in this case it looks another so it's just a matter of making sure that you don't have this like I just did so you have this because every so often each side of this is a little bit of a different angle so I'm going to get to basting and I'm going to use the same type of basting technique that I used in the RS-12 where I try to make sure that my tags are going opposite the one it attaches to the best I can. So that means that the one I want the tags to go away from would be the last piece that I baste. So I've connected these two pieces. And I've connected my teeny tiny triangle to the end of my bar piece, which is 13. So I've connected 15 to 13 and 18 to 14. And now I'm going to connect 11 to 13 and 14 to 13 to make this whole unit. Okay, so I've got this unit all set up. And it's got this little teeny tiny point on it. So that will be that section. And, that, and I will do this next section and connect it to my number 19. 
So I basted my big triangle and I've basted this with this side first, then two and then three. So my tags will go out into my quilt design. And this is all put together and the other one is not, so it gives you an assembly. So I went to this and I stuck this on here, this teeny tiny triangle, and then I connected it to here and to here. So I'm going to connect all three of these units and make my V section here. So now I have my little V section all assembled with these teeny tiny triangles wrangled into their spots. So I have basted my center diamond and I'm going to put that in place. And because I made my fabric go the same direction with my arrow placement, that they're all gonna line up nice and pretty. I'm gonna connect one side and then the other, but because there is two pieces in this seam, even though this one's minuscule, I'm still going to go on one side and then tie off and start and finish the other because if there's not one piece to one piece, you want to make sure that you tie it off on one end and then secure it on the other and meet in the middle because that's the only way to size it in there correctly. So I've attached the one side and I just wanted to, I treat this just like an individual side and then I'm just going to go here and attach this second side like it's you know, just a normal piece. I always think it's kind of weird to be doing it this way because it feels weird because I'm normally attaching these to side to side, but that's how I'm going to do that. Now I've got my square attached to my V section. So now I've got two external sides to work with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and attach these pieces. And that'll be a unit. Then I'm going to treat these as rows and assemble them as, as a building section here. So I'm going to put 8 and 10 onto 9 and then build the rows. Okay, so I got my two pieces attached here. So I'm going to set this unit aside while I assemble my next three-piece row right here. So basting for my little pieces here. I did this side first and then this side and this side so my tags go away from my seams. On this one, I did this side last so my tags go away from that seam. And I did this, this long side last as well on this side so that way I can assemble this with, with uh, greater ease. So I have my five, six, and seven units made and I'm going to attach this to my the rest of my block that I have assembled. Okay, now I've connected this row to the rest of these and I'm going to assemble my 234 unit right here. Okay, so here's a good example of basting. I basted this and I had an issue because I rotated it and I didn't know which side was what. So You've got fabric direction that I lined up, but basically I know that this is my top because I did that one first, so my tags would be out. So this is going to be like this. These I did basting here, this one last, and this one last. So I have this, I did this one first. That way I got my tags out and I know that my orientation is correct and I will base these together. Or excuse me, I will stitch these together. So I got this piece assembled and I'm just going to connect it to the main triangle. And then I'm going to base this, this side being last, so I can get a clean, a clean fold so that I can connect it to the tip of my triangle and be done with my... RS-13 block, which finishes my entire right side. Well, I've got my last piece row, and all i got to do is put on the tip. And now that I've added my tip, I now have a completed 
RS13 triangle, and that completes my entire right side.